Hi people, my name is Elle and I am the host of The Mage System. So today I'm going to be revisiting the dissociated video. So basically, I don't know if you recall, but I made a video about dissociated uh, creator on YouTube who has DID, um, talking about my thoughts on this situation. And I'm just gonna be going back over. Um, I wanna start this by saying that this isn't gonna get a lot of views or anything. It doesn't have a very provocative title. It's mainly it's mainly like directed at the people who saw my dissociated video. Um, but it, yeah, so it's not really my goal here is to like get views or anything. I just genuinely, it's been on my mind and I really wanna talk about it. Um, but yeah, if you somehow did, are seeing this one but didn't see that one I guess I'll put it in the corner if you want to watch it but um I doubt that that's the case so uh basically I'm just going to be going back over like what my opinions on it now that the video has come out and people have given me responses and I want to address the criticism that I got for it that was good criticism and then the stuff that I genuinely just disagree with so um let's see okay firstly I'm gonna I put like a pin comment on the video talking about like my thoughts on it now so I'm just gonna like discuss some of that so as for my personal opinions on dissociated they were definitely some of my first exposures to really truly learning about DID and that was very helpful to me at the time and I watched them along with other popular DID creators like Multiplicity and me and the Entropy System and nowadays I respect them but I'm not like a huge fan or anything. I do get why people are off put by them. Their presentation is almost unnaturally perfect. However, I never thought much of it, and I always assumed, assumed that it was a Kaya thing. They have sort of a perfectionistic way of showing themselves that perhaps was a product of the way they were brought up, but it's not really mine to speculate on. I wanted to share something like the sentiment that another commenter said on the video. Um, they said something to the effect of, People often assume that anyone whose DID is not experienced as constant endless suffering is often targeted as a faker or otherwise a very or otherwise very scrutinized. They assume that if a person living with DID has hobbies like getting dressed up, putting on silly makeup, or enjoying any aspect of life, it must mean that they are lying about their illness. I also wanted to apologize again for referring to systems team pinata and dissociated with a singular pronoun instead of like a plural pronoun like they um and because in my brain i was thinking about one particular alter whenever i was thinking about them and not the whole system so i'm sorry about that i feel bad about that as far as team pinata i wanted to it reiterate that they suck and that their shitty apology about the art was shitty and that the things that they did show that they do not deserve much of an ounce of grace in this situation I do think it is worth considering that as far as dissociated and their role in this, that if we are under the assumption that Team Pinata is kind of a predator, right? It could be a possibility that dissociated is not so much of an accomplice as they are someone who naively fell for their bullshit. But I know that as trauma survivors, we often latch onto people and our brain excuses things and sees past things we really should be considering red flags. Just because dissociated is a survivor doesn't mean they're absolved of any responsibility, but it has occurred to me that this could be a possible explanation. Basically, if a trauma survivor is in a relationship with a predator and then you get mad at them for being in a relationship with a predator, I think it's a good idea to consider the option that maybe they were manipulated you know what I mean? Like, if you are in a relationship with someone like that, and you have a history of being in relationships where you are victimized, I think it is a good idea to us, like, assess the situation a little more here and understand that we don't have the full context of the situation. I also wanted to add this response I made to a lovely commenter on here who pointed out some great things that gave me a broader point of view. Um, I agree with almost everything you said. 
I do think some of the responses they receive are abusive and deserve to be dealt with as such, but I do think sometimes they interpret some criticism as malicious when that wasn't the intent. That's probably a trauma, trauma response, but again, it doesn't matter. I understand that it could be difficult to parse out the difference whenever an overwhelming amount of the critique you get is out of pocket and vile. I do think they work extremely hard to present themselves as professional and knowledgeable on a topic that they, at the end of the day, do not specialize in. It's not that they can't make educational content around trauma. I do that. But if they're going to be making it as seriously as they present themselves, they should probably be extremely thorough about the ac accuracy of the information they give. They really don't need to be that serious in how they advertise themselves, and they're probably shooting themselves in the foot. They could just be a channel that makes DID related videos and other entertaining comment without branding themselves as this giant project, you know? Because at the end of the day, dissociated is a person. They're just a person. They don't have a degree in anything. All they do is just have DID and know some stuff about it because they're very involved in the community. But they tend to brand themselves as just like this huge, like, project you know what I mean and that's fine but I just think that it's difficult to do that whenever you aren't you whenever you don't specialize in that thing you know and you're just one person and you don't have a team of people fact checking what you're saying and making sure that everything you're saying is good information dissociated doesn't have that team and <laughs> they had one person once upon a time <laughs> but then some shit ensued um, anyways, um, I think in terms of addressing their critics, they have gone with the approach nowadays of, of completely avoiding them and it makes a lot of sense and I don't blame them. My mental health would be in shambles if I was receiving the kind of hate that they do. I would want to throw my phone into the ocean. This is honestly one of the main reasons I made this video, the feeling of imagining what would it, what would it, what it would be like to be on the receiving end of all that hatred. But by completely cutting yourself off from every critique, you are also ignoring the ones you probably should be listening to. Okay, so now I'm done reading the pinned comment. So, <laughs> so some people also enlighten me on more problematic stuff dissociated as done in the comments. Like for example, somebody talked about how she said, she said our lives matter too when we're talking to someone uh, during like the BLM protests going on. Tasteless, rude thing to say and not a good look. There are things that Dissociated has done that are like this. There are, are critiques like this that I've gotten in the comments also as, about Pen Team Pinata as well, which led me to say the thing that I said about Team Pinata. But um, yeah, I just wanted to address those and say that like, again, Dissociated Def surely isn't, <laughs> surely isn't an angel. Um, next I'm going to get into the criticisms that I just flat out fucking disagree with. So the first thing I wanted to address is I got a few like comments saying that I was fishing for views, fishing for a dissociated collab, or just being a general pick me or something like that. And I just wanted to say that, no, that's not why I made the video at all. Honestly, I couldn't give two fucks what Dissociated thinks of me. I have a lot of shit to do, and I just don't have time to care about that, okay? It's not that I don't care about what anyone thinks of me. I care about what you think of me to some extent. But Dissociated just was not a blip on my radar. Um, if I began associating with them, it would probably make me a little bit nervous because of the amount of people that would probably be saying negative things about me. Um... I just have nothing to gain from that other than, I don't know, maybe they're nice. I don't really know because I don't know them. Um, I don't, like, the main reasons that I make content are because it gives me a sense of, like, se sense of self in a world where I generally feel lost a lot of the time and I feel like I don't do anything but tedious, mundane responsibilities. This is a place where I actually feel like my voice matters. And another reason I make content is not for money or anything, I, I, even though that would be nice. <laughs> I don't make money off of making content and I don't care about fame very much because honestly, having that many opinions about me, like put on me, like that's a lot, okay? Um, 
what I do like about having attention whenever I make content is that I can talk to people about the subject that I'm making the content on. That's why I do this. And also I do it because the things that I talk about on my channel are things that there are a lot of, Jesus fucking Christ. There are things that a lot of people, um, seem to talk about on the internet, but I think that there's something missing from the conversation and I want to add to that. And so I guess part of the intent of my, you know, videos are like the same reason people make video essays because they just have something to fucking say and they want to talk about it. And I think that's the only reason why I want attention on my channel is because I want more people to be aware of certain things that I want to talk about, like certain things regarding the way we think about DID. I want people to hear more nuance about that. So anyways, I don't know why I just launched into that whole thing about them. Anyways, about my, about me, but long story short, um, I, yeah, I don't even think dissociated would want to associate with us just because I don't think they'd want to associate with someone who made like a long video about them. I feel like that's a weird way to start a friendship. <laughs> I also just think we're very different people. I don't, I don't know. But, um, so why did I make the video? Um, I made the video because it generally blows my mind. Some of the culture around them online and the way people talk about them, it blows my fucking mind. Okay, let me just put it like this, okay? Let me take someone like J.K. Rowling, okay? Someone who I actually think sucks. Beloved author of Harry Potter, extremely transphobic human being who is feeling a terrible narrative around trans people. Um, I, let me just start there, okay? Um, I wouldn't do this to J.K. Rowling, even though they genu genuinely suck. I would not, like, go on a subreddit about them and fucking hate comment, like, shit about them all the time. I would not spend a substantial amount of information, like, time doing that, because that is, I have shit to do, and that's not good for my mental health, okay? But if you're going to get 10,000 people to bully someone on a hate subreddit, at least do it to someone who's bigger and has it all together and who's a billionaire like fucking JK Rowling, okay? Instead of like just picking some mentally ill assigned female at birth person and deciding to analyze everything they do into a huge portfolio of reasons why that person is a bad person. There are so many horrible public figures and you choose to scrape whatever evidence you can for this one. It's just very bizarre behavior. And I think it honestly has something to do with the fact that like JK Rowling owns up to being transphobic. She's like, yeah, I'm a fucking transphobe. I'm not afraid to say that. But whenever people apologize for stuff, like I feel like that makes it more attractive to do that with. I don't know. It's a very interesting phenomenon and I'm not completely sure why it is. I do genuinely think part of the reason is because people cringe at Dissociated and they don't really cringe at JK Rowling. You know what I mean? And cringe, well, cringe can make you an angry motherfucker. Cringe can light a fire in you. Um, so anyways, uh, it, it just doesn't make any fucking sense. Um, so let me just think about this. Okay. I think about like Eugenia Cooney, who's also another person who is extremely targeted by like hate subreddits, right? Um, as a, for a person who formerly had anorexia, it fucking boggles my mind that so many people think that taking an emaciated woman and hurling attacks at her and digging up personal information about her family on a hate subreddit is somehow going to be helpful in aiding this woman to choose to recover and take care of herself. When in fact, these spaces of people that do shit like this are probably partly the thing that's fueling her to continue doing her disorder. Of course, it's not all of it, but I do think it's part of it. Eugenia Cooney has trauma with being bullied in school. And she talks about how that's one of the things that fuels her eating disorder. What she doesn't need is a fucking hate subreddit of people doing that. So anyways, um, it just boggles my mind that people choose like one specific person. And most of the time it is a mentally ill AFAB person. Anyways, um, yes, Eugenia Cooney did say once that there were two genders. <laughs> And that's not nothing. But she also is on her deathbed. And would you look at a fucking chronically ill person who is about to die of a physical illness and berate them for a shit take that they have? No. 
because that's obviously not the most important thing that's going on here. Okay, that's like really fucking weird. Okay, J of course, just because you're mentally ill, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't like be held to the same moral standard as everyone else, but you're not holding them to that standard. You're holding them above that standard. You're going dramatically beyond what you need to do that is just actually not doing anything to help anything. Which brings me to like one of my final points. This is not productive or constructive. It's not doing anything. It's completely useless. I mean, beyond the fact that it's cruel, the person that you're saying this about probably isn't even going to see it. And God, I, I hope they fucking don't, but they're probably not going to. You're just locking yourself in a sweaty chamber. If it's A, not helping anything at all, the next thing is that it's not healthy for the people doing this either. It is not helpful where every time somebody posts something, you're just like, oh, look, they posted something else. Just another fucking cash grab. And look, you can see them fucking body checking in the monitor. Like, that's not healthy for anyone. That's not good. Whenever you could be spending that time on a subreddit of an artist that you love, talking about how much you love them, instead you're choosing somebody on the internet that you hate and spending your time obsessing about how much you hate them. That's fucking, that's not good for you. And if you take that in combination with the fact that this effort is completely useless. It's a futile effort. Nothing, it's, this isn't going to do anything. Zero change is going to be created from this. So why are you doing it? It's a rhetorical question. I'm saying <laughs> you shouldn't do this. Um, anyways, um, okay. So basically, one of the last things I said, this is inspired by a video I saw by a YouTuber called Big Joel. Um, anyways, uh, so cancel culture. I'm using that word because that's just the word that's sort of been dubbed for it. There's not like another word for it. Um, it's an interesting thing and it's very nuanced because it is on one hand, public protest is one of the things that is gotten shit done throughout history. That is what you do whenever you don't like something, you know, you boycott it. That's just how shit gets done. Okay. Sometimes. Um, and then another thing is that 99% of the time, uh. the people that people are canceling are just did something really shitty, you know? And so it, it is, it serves a role in culture. Okay. But at the same time, it is also an aesthetic and a genre. Cancel culture is not just justice. It is an aesthetic and a genre, and it is entertainment as well. And I think the intersection between entertainment and law is always something that should be analyzed and should be thought about critically. And I, I yeah, basically that. <laughs> Like, for example, the fucking death penalty. I feel like a lot of people who like the death penalty like it because of schadenfreude. And they like seeing somebody that did something bad get punished. When um, maybe that's not always the best reason to do things. Um, the best reason to do things is to make society a better place. And I feel like... I'm not, why am I going? Why are we talking about the fucking death penalty right now? Oh my God. Okay. Anyways, compassion, guys, empathy, not even necessarily for that person, but just like realize that sometimes the way to get shit done is not by locking yourself in a sweaty ass subreddit where you talk shit about someone. <laughs> it's about having compassion in the way that you approach situations. Sometimes that's the better way to get things done. Unless you're like boycotting like a fucking company, you know, where, or like just a huge millionaire where like it makes sense to do that it, because larger institutions need larger things to create change. If it's someone like dissociated, a niche internet creator who has a lot of mental illness and is very vulnerable it's just weird. I, I don't know. Okay, I feel like I've been saying the same thing over and over again. Anyways. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Can't wait for all the dollar bills I'm going to make off of this one. I'm just kidding. I mean, 
actually my channel is very very close to being sh like monetized i just need more watch hours so if you want to watch this video about five more times it's okay just put it on the background put it on 2x speed i'm just kidding <laughs> i'm just kidding um bye